We want to hear a testimony now from one of us. Tell us about what this whole thing has meant for her. Karo Bogonko, kindly come up and share uh, your story with us. And I pray that we can be encouraged as Karo shares. It takes courage to do this. And thank you so much for coming with Noel <laughs> to do this. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Good afternoon. I don't know if I'm afraid. I don't know how to preach like Nguko. And I've never stepped here. Yeah. Okay, mine is short. I just want to share with you an experience that I've gone through for the past three years. Yeah, I know some of you know it, and uh, I appreciate that I've worked with you throughout the journey. Yeah. For me, I joined this uh, church in 2018. That's when I was baptized, and uh, did my wedding the same year in the church. I stand here as a, a fighter of uh, cancer. Yes. I remember I was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer in the year 2022, starting of the year. The previous year, which was 2021, I had gone through a lot with uh, a lot of abdominal pains, going in and out of the hospital. And uh, at the end of that year, it became so worse. And I used to ask God that uh, I get the best, the, the, the real diagnosis, the real something that is making me feel that way. So one time, we were having our all night. And what I told God, I'm going there just to pray to know what I'm going through, to know what I can treat. Yes, because we go to the hospital, sometimes you're given medication, but the real diagnosis is not there. So I came for that night vigil with one, one intention. And I remember that time uh, we were having Pastor Odualo. And at some point I had talked to him that I'm going through a lot, but I don't know what's happening. I had cut weight. Yes. That night, when we come for night uh, vigil, I know we are told to pay up for prayers. I went to that corner. I had no partner. I cried for one hour. I remember I was sick, and my husband had told me, because you're sick, I don't think you'll manage to go for the night. I just told him, just drop me at the church. Yes. Uh, I moved from this place, I went home, and it, it became worse. I went to visit a physician, and uh, being the end of the year, uh, he told me they are going for holiday. So I did some examinations, came home. I took my medication and the pain went down. As we were preparing to start the next year, I was reporting for my night duty. I was okay. So going to change from home clothes to, to the scrubs in the hospital, I felt something hot, you can say warm, come out of my, my back. Huh? Then I said, ah, let me rush to the toilet. When I went there, I found blood coming out. And uh, I had to call my doctor he is my gastrologist. And he told me just come to casualty and get admitted. And that's where my journey started. 
it was, I remember it was February 2022. I was admitted, went for an examination we call a colonoscopy. And it was done, I remember, in the evening. After the theater, there's a place that we are told to wait for the results. And then uh, when the doctor came out, I could hear him give other people the results. And then he told me, Carol, it's someone that I'm used to. And then told me, Caroline, I think you're you, you tired. Uh, I'll come to, to give you the results in the ward. Now, uh, I started asking my question, the questions. See, we were done with the rest of the people. <laughs> I'm just, I can receive the, the, the results. I went to the ward. Mm, that night, I tried to talk to my nurses, to my fellow nurses, and they told me uh, they are not allowed to give the results, of which <laughs> we've done. Most of the time, we give our uh, colleagues the, the answers from the investigations. So I slept. The next day in the morning, my in charge, I used to work in the high dependent unit, HDU. And then my in church comes very early in the morning with some two nurses. And they're telling me, you're going to get out of this. It's something small. I can see them cry. I'm like, oh, why? why are they crying? Is there something wrong? Then uh, they went. Then my doctor came. I remember he just slapped it on my face. Just told me, Carol, you know, we went inside and... Uh, uh, you're supposed to be revealed by a surgeon, but with or without surgical intervention, you're going to start your chemotherapy. I felt like the world had come to an end. That's when I realized the, 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 the statement that people say, the, the earth should open up when you are swallowed. So I was like, whom am I supposed to tell? this information. I remember I called my husband and told him what has happened. And he was in denial. He told me, ah, he's just talking to me. Who has told him that that is the diagnosis? We are going to do other tests. He just refused. It's not the one. He was in denial totally. So the next person I called is Maggie. Because in our sector, I said I don't want to explain much because maybe most of the people might not know, uh, understand the medical terms. I said, I'll tell Maggie, and then maybe he will, she will see who to share to. Then I called my close friend, and I told her, please come with my daughter, and the results were not good. So and that is how news was broken. Then from there now, I started the journey. I was supposed to go in for surgery. That was on a Friday. I was supposed to go in for surgery the next Monday because uh, the surgeon visited and explained to me. I told them, let me just go home first and plan my, my house. You know, as human being, beings, we, we may, you know, I was thinking, you know, as a, a medic, I know what happens. You don't know the results. For me, I just want to go and make sure my house is in order when <laughs> I come for surgery. I don't know when I'm going to get out. They refused, but I had to insist. And the good thing is my husband, my husband backed me up. Um, and by around 9 p.m., we were released. I went home, planned myself, uh, called my, my sister-in-law. I told her, you have to come for my kids. And then, because I know uh, around here, I, I live near my sister, and I knew she's going to get to, to, to do a lot. So I planned everything. And then I was admitted on Sunday evening. I went in for the first surgery. It was a major surgery. I came out, that was uh, on 28th February, I went in, I came out, after like a week, it broke, yeah, and my abdomen started swelling, 
I went into sepsis. I was taken back to theatre for the second surgery, where it was, uh, a stoma was created, something that something was uh, something that is put out outside the abdomen, outside the stomach, that you can poop. You you you're not allowed to poop the normal way, so the you poop through that uh, tube. So you use what we call uh, the colostomy bags. So you have to change. Sometimes when you go to vehicle, you go somewhere, sometimes they burst, they poop, sometimes come out. And uh, so I stayed in the bed for some weeks. The, the wound didn't seem to, to heal. I was going down. I was bleeding a lot, draining a lot. I lost. And somehow, I started losing some hope. Because I could see my patients. I used to work with very sick patients. And apparently, before I got sick, I was taking care of a certain guy who was going through the cancer process and was going over the end stages. I started thinking myself throughout the journey what I've been doing for that guy, the investigations, and most of the time I used to be allocated that patient. A lot came to my head. And I remember I used to tell God, my kids are too small, too young, but I don't want to push you let your will be done. So uh, it reached a time my insurance got finished and I had exited like 700,000. So uh, I saw the HR come, told me to sign the forms for deductions. And I had no even power to sign. I just told her, just let him sign for me and you can deduct any amount you wish. So my husband had to tell them I want to transfer her back from Nairobi Hospital to Aga Khan. And it was a push up and down, but he succeeded. It was a critical time. I moved from that place to Aga Khan. I got a, a different surgeon. And I was there. Most of the time I could look at myself, could see the a lot of drains, there's that stoma, there's the, the, the main surgery side. I couldn't wake up, I couldn't turn. People are turning me. I was like, ah, I think, let me just, you know, sometimes you feel like it's the end of it. And uh, even up to now, I just, sometimes I ask God, things happen to us that we had where do they find us at? And at that, that, that moment, I think I was so close to God. And most of the time, I could just whisper. Sometimes I was not able to, to pray. So it reached a time I was discharged. I went home. Yeah, I started getting well. But remember, I have to, to change the... You know, my house was like... It is a, a hospital room. My kids got used to helping me changed the, the stomas, my family got used to it. Yeah, and at that time I saw that my husband went through a lot. At my healing point, what made me, I think, strong are the people that were surrounding me. Yeah, I can say, starting from the church, I saw a lot of support, a lot of support that Odualo could always pray for me in the morning, evening, at some time, there's a time he traveled to abroad, could just call me from abroad at night, pray for me. The Kumarok sector, I realized that they had chosen a day <sighs> that they could always pray for me every day, that day, just for me. There were sisters that were close to me. My, my sister, my sister could be there 
all through and they don't know how God came through because she needed transport from her place to my place, my children are there. And by then I think it's that time that the children had crossed, closed for a long period. So they need to go back to school, no uniform, no books, nothing, we are down finances. And my, my friends came and picked them, they went and did shopping. They bought them uniform, they came and did shopping in my house, for, which could last me for three months. They did everything. They could come in the morning, they made a timetable, they could stay there alternatively, change me, take care of the kids. If the house girl is not good, I could just see them change the house girl because I wasn't on my feet. I got my sisters could come, pray with me, the church members, yeah. I finished that period, I went to work. It wasn't easy because sometimes you, you with the patients and you know when you have a stomach, if it, the gas coming out, it just comes. You with the patient, the patient doesn't know, is just confused where, where is that noise coming from. But you know, you can't control it, not the natural way. So I'm just there with the patients and they learn to, to push through with it. Yeah, I finished that period, and I learned to live with the stoma. For one year, I could even come to church with it. I think most of the people didn't know that. So for one year, that was 20, the whole of 2022, I stayed with the stoma up to 2023 May, when I went back for another major surgery, surgery which I really debated, they was telling my husband I can stay with the stoma, because there are many people who've stayed with it. The people with the anal cancer. We debated, but uh, since I had that trust with my surgeon, sat me down, I went back f for them. It's major, I went back for it. It went, took me through hell again. But still I could see the hand of God. Because I'm telling you, if you're surrounded with people who know God, my friends, and we don't come from the same church, and some, some are Catholics, I could see priests. Sometimes I wake up, I find a priest next to my bed praying. I could see sisters, the nuns in Catholic, they could come and pray beside my bed. My life was just prayers, prayers, prayers. Yeah, when I came out of the hospital, I went through a lot when I did the reversal. That was in May 2023. By the time I was getting well, I started going to work. And we formed a group that we call prayer group. It had six, six, six ladies. There's no mountain, no prayer center we've not gone. We've gone to mountains, we go, we've gone to many places to pray, and even gone, paid for Airbnb just to pray the whole night. I've gone here, most of the time could come for the night prayers, just because of what I was going through. And I realized that some situations make you come closer to God. And sometimes I could see Mbuva stand here and they tell, tell us, Please come for the night. And I could feel it hurt. I could hurt. My body could hurt when I come at night and find very few people. And see him, how he used to strain. And I was like, I wish people could know what other people are going through and where people have come from because of these prayers. So I, I was becoming stable. And all of a sudden, I, f I realized that my abdomen is growing like someone who is becoming pregnant. I couldn't even put my hands this way. I remember that is the time we were planning to go to Tanzania as couples, and I had registered, even paid a deposit to go. At that juncture, I said, let me just go for a, an ultrasound when I was in, at work. And when I did an ultrasound, broke me down that it had moved from colon to the ovaries and it was big. This time it came like a burst of it. I went through the scans 
And I remember this day that I went to, to my doctor and I asked her now, how do we call this treatment? Because the other one was uh, uh, curative. Then he told, she told me, to be honest with you, we are going to do palliative care. It broke me. Yeah. I asked if I'm going to be done for surgery. She said no. We just do chemotherapy. <laughs> I came out of that place very broken. And I remember it was Thursday. He asked me if we start the chemotherapy immediately. I said no. I want to go for prayers. <sighs> I have a very close friend. And some of my friends here know her. She came to me and told me, <coughs> there's no, nothing that God cannot do. We have to pray. So she took me that Friday. I was hurting. I couldn't even stand. Actually, before we went, I remember that time, I was in the house. And during that duration, I couldn't stand straight. I used to crawl from my bedroom to the sitting room to the balcony, sleep there, no position. I used to go through pain. No minutes that I could just rest. I remember people could visit me and sometimes they talk to me, Kina, Kina Eunice, and I really appreciate you people. This, this time, my parents, Kina Steve, they visited me and given hope, given up. And Steve read for me a verse. And I always read this book everywhere I go. And it's Second Kings. I can't remember it well, but I think it's Second Kings 20. 20 from verse uh, 1 about the Ezekiel's illness. When the when Ezekiah was very, fall very ill, and uh, is it a king or the, an angel was sent to, 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 to tell him to prepare for death. And he uh, turned to the wall and prayed. I couldn't listen well, because I was going through a lot of pain. And when they moved out, I went to my bedroom. Because Steve has sent it to my WhatsApp, I opened the Bible and read it and gave myself a second chance. That night I went through a lot. And I remember calling Jackie in the middle of the night. I told her, it's becoming unbearable. They came with Nenos at night. We prayed until they went to sleep. Then they went back. The following day, I think that is when we visited the this is uh, a prayer center that mostly, I think it's for the Catholics, Vincentian in Thika. I remember we were doing worship and they went down for prayers. There is a session that people go for prayers for a long time. As they sing, I went down for prayers. I prayed and I remember just kicking off. I saw my people surrounding me, people, people pr uh, crying. I saw myself went, went, going f to theater, and I was in so much pain. When I came out, I told my friend, hey, I think there's something bad that is going to happen, because whatever I've seen, I don't think I'm going to pull through. When I come back from Thika, I think that Monday I went to, to work. I used to try, to try going to job, because you know, you can't be given off days every time. And when I went to work, it was unbearable. My, my charge nurse is so understanding. Called for an Uber, I went home. That evening, I became very sick. I called the, 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 my, to the hospital. They came home, tried to resuscitate my pain, was taken to, to the hospital, and it was emergency because I had developed uh, intestine obstruction, whereby my, my intestine could, my food could not pass. And I had taken one month without going for long call. 
because the tumor had closed the colon completely, so he could feel the urge, but it couldn't come out. So I went to, to the hospital and it was emergency. At the hospital, when I opened my eyes, I found people around me. My friend had brought some women to me. They were really crying and praying, waiting for the surgeon to come. They were asking for blood. And uh, like, uh, by the time they were finishing praying, I got a priest there. He came and started. Uh, he took us through the mass, and by then he told me, I want to apply oil on you. I told him, no, you know me, I'm raised in Catholic. There is that uh, oil that someone is going to, through the end stages and maybe almost to die. You, you, ne kadani yo ni lem after amush. So I said, no, he said, that's, of, that's fine. By the time the priest was done, the theater people were there. I was taken in. Before I went in, I remember Dr. Dua, uh, uh, Pastor Dualo calling, and I told my, my husband, immediately she goes he, in, please tell me so that I may go down for prayers. So when I went in at 11, my friends were there, and they stayed in the hospital. I went in at no, 5 p.m. with three, doct three surgeons because they didn't know that uh, maybe it will be successful. And my friends were there, my family was there trying to donate because they needed a lot of blood. I came out at around six in the morning and my friends were in the hospital from 5 p.m. to six in the morning. I was taken to the high dependent unit I stayed there, I could, when I woke up, I, I could just look at myself, I look at the machines, I'm in oxygen. At some point, I could remove the oxygen and try to see if really I, I need that oxygen, and it could drop very immediately, and I could put it back. It's not easy when you're awake, and you're a medic, and you're maybe in ICU or in HDU, it's not easy. I stayed there. And by God's grace, with a lot of prayers, a lot of support, I came out of the HD, I went to the normal ward. I graduated to home. I went through healing. And I've come to realize that life can just go within a, a second, a blink of an eye. We just need to be ready to go. And I started my chemotherapy, which hasn't been easy for me. It, was, it has not been easy. Because every time I go for chemo, sometimes I go on Fridays and I have to come here on Sunday. And I really say sometimes, let me just go to feel that warmth in our church. And I thank God that I, by the time I was getting sick, I had recognized my community as my, the Nairobi Christian Church. Because most of you have been my backbone. I could see sometimes we could go down, but at the end, God has never left us down. Yes, I could see some people could just hold my hands. Kina Kathy, Kathy Njuguna. I really appreciate you people so much. Yeah, Akina Miss Nguku. I remember there's a time I think I was down and I was surprised. From nowhere, they told me we are coming to, to see you, and they came. It was so, I really appreciate you. The mentors, the teens mentors group, you've really worked with me. My, my sector, the backbone of my, my spiritual life, my mentors, you've worked with me through this journey. My children, I'm telling you, this condition pushed my girl to be so much mature and mature, early maturity because she's the one sometimes who could wash me and do massage and could tell me, mommy, you'll be fine. One time you're going to wake up, cook us our nice meals. We will cook together the way we, we used to do. And I think maybe God is going to make a way for you. They knew how to pray through that. And I can say it has been a very long journey. 
Yeah, and I've learned a lot from this. And one thing I've learned is that you cannot do alone. You need a backup. And most importantly, God. Yeah, I can tell you, uh, my friends could come within at night, 9 p.m. after they finished work. They come to my bedroom. I remember the first prayers. We started praying for one hour, and I could see them struggle with their tears. And I'm not crying, but I could see them cry. Yeah, led by my sister. I could see their tears. And in the hospital, I remember my, my husband sometimes, I could see him cry behind the curtains. Yeah, he's really gone through a lot. And I, I thank those brothers who've worked with him. I thank the friends who've come through for him because there is nothing hard as someone who is taking care of someone with a condition. You know, having a friend like me is not easy. And it's not easy to maintain such friends because having me is just having like, it's a liability. You're helping me throughout. And sometimes I might not be of help to you. It's just like having a liability. But some, some people have just stood with me. And I can tell you, apart from my family, which has really come through, the, we usually meet, sometimes go through the whole night praying with different. And I can tell you my situation has brought my family closer to God, even my cousins, my extended family. Apart from family, I appreciate a lot my friends who've worked with me and have remained with me till the, this moment that I speak. And today I stand here. Most of the time I've been thinking, and there's a time I, I wanted to, to do the testimony when before the Odualos moved to Mombasa. But that is again that when I went back to the condition again. And today I stand here because it might be my last Sunday standing here in front of you. Uh, because for the past, as I went through this struggle, I was in class and I was going through a lot, a lot of struggle to, to read uh, because I, I had a lot of examination to do, but I did not give up. My husband pushed me. I remember when I was doing chemo, one time my hands were swollen, my body was weak, but he could wake me up and I could read at night. Sometimes I read while my hands are up because I'm thinking maybe one day God is going to heal me and I finish my situation. I was in classes and I remember going to South Africa for my examination and the partner who was next to me was trying to, to teach me most of the things that I had not gone through. And those exams, most people go to do twice, three times. So I could lace my hands from Nairobi to South Africa because that hand was so much swollen. When I went there, that's the time I had my stoma. We reached there, she changed my stoma. And this is a new person whom I had not even known. I knew at the airport. We studied, I went for my examination, and for God's grace, I passed it on the first attempt. And, and after that, I think I held, I held the process for my healing. Um, I opened it, uh, it up when I, I finished my second surgery and started the process. But most of my things, I think those people maybe know, most of my, my emails, my maybe reading, my husband could do my, my emails like it's me doing it. And maybe they think it's me. So most of the emails when they send, I'm critically ill, but he could maneuver and send back. So he went through that journey. And at some point, yeah, we were, scheduled for interview and we went for for the interview uh, in May and during the interview I think we were put to what we call administrative processing uh, which we were given a yellow card where, where you're not allowed to, to travel which broke us again as a family and at that time is when we uh, the doctor had given me another sad news. 
And when we came home, I remember we were crying the whole time. You know, there's this time that we used to, we, we, we developed our habit as Komarok sector sisters. Every Saturday we usually come to pray in church in the morning at around six. And I remember that morning I came when it was my turn to, to share and pray. I remember I broke down and cried. Akina Noile have been there for me. And when I moved from here, I felt that like I'm relieved. We've gone through that the past two months. It wasn't easy. And uh, the past, past two weeks, I've been admitted because when you do several uh, abdominal surgeries, you develop a certain condition that they call, you, you, you grow some additions in the colon, which has also formed a partial obstruction for me right now. The past two weeks I've been in the hospital and I was discharged on Friday. And that Friday is when Akinambuva came to see me and I told them uh, my visa was approved like a week ago and I'm supposed to relocate with my family. And today might be my last Sunday in church. Yeah, and I told them I need to come and at least encourage someone who is down, that it's not the end of the world. Yeah, we are walking, we don't know, we don't know our days. Some of us are going through such conditions. But you know God is, your power is written. Yeah, they say even in darkness, there's some light somewhere. Yeah, I've been praying that I can make maybe the future of my children and even give my husband a small smile because he's gone through hell. And uh, to God's glory, among the many people who are put on that administrative processing, which sometimes goes even for a year, it was among the few was removed in the, maybe I went like one, one month and maybe two weeks and God, sh God saw me through, and I uh, might be traveling next week. And what I pray, f I ask from the church is to pray for me, for the pains that I'm going through. I'm not that stable. And for me to have strength so that I'm able to do the new job. Yeah, I'll be going to a state called Missouri, and I'll be working in a hospital called uh, uh, Banis Jewish Hospital. Yeah, I'm asking for your prayers, and I think, as Singukwa said, it's good sometimes, you know, we don't go fetching uh, new disciples. Uh, there are those people who are in the, the church that their faith has gone down. Let's try and reach out. And sometimes we see people maybe okay, faces are fine. Let's reach out and know what people are going through. Yeah, and that will bring up many of us. And let the church be strong. Let's not be asking what's happening with the church. Where is the where are the funds going down? What's you as a person? Because we are told that connect personally. You as a person, what are you doing to change it? Have you changed that soul that is next to you that you know now this person is going behind, used to sit there, used to do well, and now this is going back. Stop complaining. You as a person, what have you done? Have you brought that soul back to the church? And I always pray for our church that we're going to be strong for each other. And I really leave a message for my sisters, especially my sisters in Coma Rock. I tell you, stay strong. I know for the recent past, you've really shown a good sign and I know that you're going to stay strong. I'll be communicating with you and I'll never leave you in my, my heart and my soul. And I pray that with the guidance of our leaders, we have very nice leaders. And for me, when I joined, I think I was in, I could see Kina Steve when they were on my back. You have to come to church. That time I used to do night and they used to follow me a lot. Most of the time you're not coming to church and it was the nature of my work. But I've come to realize that maybe I used to see it as a burden. And as Nguku has said, if you see it at, as a slavery at church, then are you going to bring another soul? Let's see it as something that is warm. I'm going to church to get something. Because I've met many people from different churches on my journey as a cancer patient. And uh, I can tell you there are many souls that 
are really wanting to know God and wanting to stay there. And when you're in the most darkest period, that is when God is telling you, join with me. And giving up is not a solution. We all have the ways to go. I thank you so much for the journey we've gone through together. And I leave you by saying that may God be with you. And I pray for this church so much and for the leadership that God is going to hold you together and give you more wisdom to take us through as the ships in the church. Thank you so much.